Excuse me, can I please talk to you for a minute? Hey, girlfriends. Welcome back to the Hey Girlfriend podcast. I'm your host, mindset and intuitive coach, Kendall D. And today, y'all, I think I feel like ruffling a few feathers or getting you to think about something a little differently, if I should say that. But I want to challenge what you think about forgiveness. That's what this show is going to be all about, as you can tell from the title. It's going to be all about forgiveness and whatnot. So what provoked me to talk about this again, I, I should say, is I was watching a clip of Red Table Talk, and it had um, Dr. Nidra Tawab. I hope I said her last name correctly. Forgive me if I'm not. She was on there um, saying some thoughts that I had myself, but I kind of shelved those thoughts because I received so much backlash from it. Like I got a lot of people that were that was grateful for it, but a lot of people was like coming for me. Not in a bad way, like, you know, threatening me. <laughs> but in the comments it was just too much and it was just too overwhelming. And I'm like, I don't want to feel like I'm trying to beat people over the head or change their point of view. But I decided to do it this way this time because at the time I didn't have a podcast. This was like a year ago. But now I do. So I'm going to express everything here. But back to what I was saying. So she was on there saying how forgiveness is a choice and how you don't have to forgive to heal. And instead you can decide to make peace. And I'm like, I said the same thing like um, last year. Um, and, and, I, or maybe earlier, no, last year, I said it last year and I brought up and I went back and found the old post and I reshared it and I put her quote in there. Cause I'm thinking, well, maybe if they hear a therapist say this, maybe <laughs> they'll take it better. But that's the thing. I can't sit here and try to force people to take it. So that's something that I'm trying to learn as well. I'm learning that I can share my truths for those that are open to hear it. And sometimes they may not be, and that's okay. Because I tell you what, when I first came to this thought about forgiveness, it was about a year or two ago, someone on my Facebook timeline, my personal Facebook timeline, she shared some thoughts about um, not forgiving your abuser. You don't have to forgive your abuser. And I was reading the comments and a lot of people agreed and I was just like, well, what? What? I thought forgiveness was for you and God said to forgive and you're supposed to forgive to heal. You can't heal unless you forgive. I'm like, what the hell? What? I was just like, no, I was so conditioned to believe differently that I could not take her saying that. I didn't comment and say all that. I think I just, you know what? I remember I wrote a comment saying, yeah, but I understand you may not want to forgive them, but forgiveness is for you. You know, the typical thing that everyone thinks and responds to whenever you say something about having a hard time forgiving someone. Forgiveness is for you. That's what everybody says. And so that was what I said. And then after a minute or two or, or reading the comments and reading everybody's um, real account of things, I'm like, let me delete my comment. And I deleted and I told her, say, I deleted my comment speaking a little bit otherwise and I instead decided to absorb what everyone was saying I think I'm gonna think on that I like this way of thinking I remember telling her that and so I was like yeah that's that's something new for me to think on instead of just jumping right to oh I'm triggered no that's not right and so I decided to just shelf it for a moment then and come back to it and y'all the way it came back around to me was like a slap in the face but it healed me ultimately from people that hurt me in the past. Two particular people in general. My dad and my first toxic ex, John. The one that I wrote about in Toxic Ex Chronicles, John, my book, that ex, John. And it was those two people in my life that I was having a hard time, quote unquote, I guess, forgiving. And I felt like I had made peace with what happened. I had moved on, you know, when I wasn't really bothered by it anymore. But every now and then I would cry thinking about how I feel about my dad and thinking about what he did or thinking about because I was still having to deal with him off and on during this time. And I was trying to just like, you know, I was just in, 
I just had so much turmoil still when it came to him. I remember I was trying to get my line off his off the cell phone account. And I felt like I was having such a hard time doing it. Like he almost wanted to have control of me and didn't want to let me do that. It was just crazy. And I was just so mad and frustrated. And I just was still getting so mad about who he was and how he is. That's not why I'm mad at my dad about the phone line, y'all. I don't think I want to go into detail about that here. I will be doing a future podcast on healing daddy wounds. And maybe I mentioned it then, but I don't want to spend an hour talking about why I dislike my dad. That's another um, podcast for another day. But, yeah. So, and I remember. I'd have to never forget where I was at. I was in traffic getting ready to go to work. Maybe from a lunch break or something. And I was just sitting there because I think I was mad at him. Because of something he did on my lunch break or said to me in a text or something. I was just so frustrated and mad. I'm like, I was just really getting mad and crying in the car. And then I was like, wait a minute. I think I'm mad and I'm crying because I'm mad at myself that I haven't quote unquote forgiven him that I'm still mad about what he did to me. I was upset at myself for feeling that way. And I realized in that moment because I said to myself like I should be past this by now. I should know this by now. I should know how he is by now. I was telling myself that as I was crying. I'm like, why am I still crying about this? I was, then I realized I'm mad at myself for still crying over this shit. For still being mad at him. I'm, I'm mad at myself for this. And then I went, I found my thought about it. I was like, I'm mad because I keep trying to force myself to forgive him. I do not have to forgive him. Because it reminded me of that post that I just talked about earlier that I seen on Facebook. About not forgiving your abuser. I wouldn't say my dad. He didn't physically abuse me. Nothing like that. It was more so emotional abuse. I guess you would say. But I get into into the details into that. And so. In that moment. When I realized. Why I was so upset. It wasn't necessarily at him. It was more so in myself. For still being angry and mad and holding on to this and crying. And I was just so mad. I'm getting mad just thinking about it, but the tears won't fall. Because I'm getting mad at just how I felt it. I remember that feeling. But the tears are not falling because I have healed it, y'all. Without forgiving him and without liking him again. Like, I still hate him. And I'm going to get into that word hate in a moment, too. I, this is going to be a loaded podcast. I just want you to put on your open minds, okay? Okay. And so... In that moment, sitting in traffic, getting ready to go to work, I remember I sat in the car and I wiped my tears. I'm like, that's it. I feel so much better. And then I applied that same thing to my ex. I was like, I hate both of them. And that's okay. I don't I don't have to act on that hate. But I was hating myself for being upset that I wasn't over it because I was forcing myself to do something that just wasn't didn't feel right. It did not feel right to forgive them. It did not feel feel right to... Um, it just didn't feel right to forgive them. It didn't feel right to all of a sudden like, oh, I like them. And I wasn't going to feel neutral to it because they had put me through some shit. But I decided at that moment that that's how I'm going to make peace with this. I made peace with that by just understanding that for one, how they are is just how they are. I'm never going to get an apology. I'm never going to get acknowledgement. I don't want anything from my ex. I'm really talking about my dad now. I'm never going to get an apology. He's never going to hold himself accountable. Like, ever. Y'all, it's been years. Like, ever. He's it's always whatever. It was a conversation. It was always like, well, you, well, you, well, you, well, you have had to, well, your mama this and this. It was always everybody else's fault but his. Always. And that hurts, you know, to be... To come to someone like that and then they and then they hit you with that. Like they're just not acknowledging your feelings and making you feel like you're crazy for how you feel. So no, why am I going to like someone like that all of a sudden? Why am I going to forgive that all of a sudden? I don't have to. I decided to just make peace with it. And that eased the anger and the bitterness. Once I it's like once I allow, allowed myself to just feel that and not put any type of meaning to it, like I'm angry because I haven't forgiven them. Once I released the shackles of forgiveness and just said, I just straight up don't like him. I straight up don't like my ex. I straight up don't like my dad. For those that say hate is such a strong word. Okay, I don't like them motherfuckers. How about that? 
<laughs> but I'm saying, y'all, be for real. Like, anyone that's been in a toxic relationship and was abused mentally, physically, emotionally, verbally, abuse, period, just especially if it was constant for years, you don't have to forgive them. Forgiveness is a choice. That's something that I've learned over the years. And seeing and seeing um Dr. Um Nidra Tawab say that. I hope I'm saying her name right. Seeing her say that, it just like revalidated me in feeling how I feel. Because even for me, like I was saying for y'all, like maybe people will take it better. But it helped me because I'm like, okay, I'm seeing a therapist, like a, someone with a degree. I have a degree, but I'm not a master's or whatever. But seeing someone else confirm that made me feel even more better. And it made me talk about it again because I'm like, I remember saying these words, but people weren't ready to hear it. And maybe I was just really getting acclimated to hearing it too. But now that I know, I want to tell y'all that because, and it's funny because I just was on Facebook a moment ago. Someone actually that I, um, I'm cool with, she asked like, how do y'all forgive? I'm just ready to, to dick this person. I'm ready to fight him every time I see him and this and that. And she was saying how she's still upset. And I'm like, and of course somebody in the comment was like, Sweetheart, forgiveness is for you, not for them. You're holding on to all these bitterness and feelings when they chilling. Just, you know, pray to God and they were saying like the typical things. And I'm like, and you know, I'm not shading anybody for saying that. That was how I was. That was how I was conditioned to believe. And I just didn't know a different way. So I posed a different way to her and I said, don't forgive them if you don't feel you can. And she said, it wasn't that she was in her feelings. She told the other commenter, it's not that I'm in my feelings, I just want to fight them. And I said, that feeling you feel is probably resistance to you trying to force yourself to be over it and forgive them. Don't force yourself to be over it. Don't force yourself to forgive them if you cannot. That's only causing you more pain. We think that the offense that someone did to us is what's causing the pain. That's what we typically feel like it's them, which it could be. And some people, you know what? I'm not going to speak for everyone. For some people, it could be that. But if it's prolonged and you're still feeling this way, it's usually turning to you resenting yourself for still feeling that way about someone, for not being able to forgive them. You think something's wrong with you because you don't have the ability to forgive and forget that. But that's the problem. You're trying to force yourself to be someone you're not. So what I am posing to anyone going through this or anyone that's thought like this or anyone that's trying to think of a new way of thinking around forgiveness, consider making peace with the past instead. That's something that will bring you all of the, it release all of the bitterness, the anger, even some of the hatred. When I say I hate my dad and my ex, consider it like I don't like them. There are some people in the world that you don't like and I feel like that's okay. It's not consuming me. The only time hate consumes you is when it's the action behind it. It's not the word. It's the action. Just like with love. Someone can say, oh, I love you. But if there's no action behind it, is it true? So that's, you can do the same thing with hate. People forget that. People like to say hate is a strong word. And I feel like abusers are the ones that have said that abusers are probably the ones that even thought of you should forgive and forget you should forgive for you i think they're the ones that thought of that shit to be honest but no no probably the church yeah probably the church i take that back <laughs> let me stop that's another podcast but um <laughs> i told you this one be a little bit um a little bit controversial, I guess, so to speak. But, man, often the things that we need are. Often the things we need to hear. Like, a different way of viewing things. But, y'all, I would not be sitting here telling you this if this didn't help me on my own journey. But, um, oh, yeah, I didn't finish the story about the girl on Facebook. But, yeah, I told her. Um, I'm jumping around, y'all. Forgive me, I got ADHD. Y'all, if you know that and been listening, you know that. But, um, but yeah, I told her, like... So, don't forgive them. She said, yeah, it just, I think that's what it is. I don't want to forgive them. I said, then don't. 
Once you realize that you're releasing yourself from this forcefulness of forgiving someone that you feel you have to do it, you won't be so angry anymore. You won't be so caught up and tied up in that. It's not even really them. She even said, it's not that I'm in my feelings about them. I think she was just mad at herself because she feel like she had to forgive them. And that's what kept me bound for so long to resentment and anger and crying. And over, I've been crying over my dad. Like being upset, mad about the shit he would do and how he couldn't be the dad I needed. And I can sit here and talk about it and I'm not tearing up because I promise I've made peace with it. I remember I posted someone on my um Instagram when I said, you know, when I first brought this topic up like uh, last year and someone was like, you probably just don't want to uh, admit that you don't know how to forgive. No, I have. I know how to forgive. Actually, now that um, we're on that, I'm going to mention that some people do deserve forgiveness. Some people, it's okay to forgive some people. Like, I forgive my mom. And the reason why I forgive my mom for my upbringing is because she acknowledged some of the things that she did. I don't expect her to acknowledge everything because... When you have your own trauma, you sometimes don't even remember doing the things you did when you were doing it out of trauma. Like, she may picture it differently because of her own trauma. So, for the things that she was able to speak up and be accountable about, okay. And also, she's changed. She has changed. Not a lot, but... Well, actually, a lot. Not completely, but a lot, I, I would say. And she's there for me now. Like, me and her are like friends now. Because I'm not living with her, of course. If I lived with her, it would be a different story. But that's another story, like I said. But <laughs> I've forgiven my mom. I have. I've forgiven my last ex, ex um, Sebastian, not John. I've forgiven the last ex. I've forgiven my husband for things that he's done. And none of them were like ever like abuse or heinous acts or anything like that just like small things like okay you know forgive and let's go and it's because he holds himself accountable he own he honors my feelings and he you know I can forgive that if anyone can hold himself accountable I can forgive that so I want you to understand that yeah some people you some people deserve forgiveness some people you can't forgive you have to use your discernment there for the motherfuckers you can't forgive y'all for them, for the people you just feel like you just cannot because it was just some shitty shit they did, make peace with it instead. Make peace with it by accepting who they are. Well, not accepting to where you have to accept them into your life, but just realizing that, okay, you really just like this. Like, it's something wrong with you. Like, for you to treat me this way, for you to do what you did to me, and for you to not acknowledge it, for you to not apologize, for you to just whatever... Or even if they did apologize and it's still just the act of it that was just so bad. Just make peace with it and realize, okay, I'm making peace that this person is, cannot be in my life. And I'm making peace that they just did that because of who they are and there's something going on with them. Hurt people hurt people, y'all. For real. And so you can make peace with that. Like with my dad, I just made peace with, he just can't hold himself accountable. He don't got it in him. And I learned more about his upbringing. He has a lot of trauma. A lot. And I'm like, you know, I made peace with him by realizing that that's just who he is. He ain't going to ever change. And I don't have to have a relationship with him because I cannot. I cannot have a relationship with someone that cannot be self-aware, hold himself accountable, and grow and evolve. Because I'm always doing it. And if I'm always doing it and you're not, I can't trust you. I can't be around you. You're not safe for me. And I dislike people like that. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with disliking someone that acts like that. So if I dislike you... Why would I be around you? I just made peace with that. I made peace with my ex, John. I made peace with how he was and that he was just traumatized too and it just took it out on me. And y'all, I want you to know the other part of this is also making peace with who you were when you were connected to those people. Because think about it. Who you were, you endured all that. And you may have endured all that longer than what you really should have. So you have to forgive yourself. That's something that you can actually always do is forgive yourself for who you were. You deserve your forgiveness more than the actual person that did the offense. If you feel like you can forgive someone for what they did to you, then by all means do it. I'm not saying don't do it. But this is for people that are struggling 
with something that happened a while ago and they still can't get over it. This is just a thought to help you with your mindset shift on this because maybe it's not the actual act. It's the fact that you're trying to force yourself to forgive. That's all this is really posing to you is that, well, maybe you should stop trying to force something and surrender to just knowing that I don't fuck with them. I don't like them. I dislike them. I hate them. If you feel like saying that, if you don't feel like it's such a strong word like I do, I can say I hate someone and know that it's not going to consume me. I'm not over here bitter. I'm not over here angry. I'm not over here taking it out on people I love. I'm in a happy relationship, been in one for seven years. I'm not, I go to sleep just fine at night. I'm not, up. you know, I'm not, it's not consuming me because I'm not acting on that hate. I know that I got love in me because of who I have around me, my group of friends, my family, my husband, how I love me. Love is all running all up and through me, but I can still have a dislike for some people, especially if who they are is someone that doesn't align with, you know, what I want to be around. And you have every right to think that highly of yourself to where you realize it's some people in this world that I would rather not be around because of how they act, because of who they are. You know, and it's not saying that you're better than anybody or that they're lesser than you. If you want to say they're beneath you because some people just may be full of shit, just really the scum of the earth. Okay, but I'm saying, you know, that's not my angle that what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that. It's just misalignment. You can just realize that I can't fuck with you because of how you are. And it's not good for me. Like, I cannot be in a relationship with my dad whatsoever, period. Even if he came around and changed and said, I hold myself accountable for everything. And he actually said the things he holds himself accountable for and he's sorry for. Even still then, I was, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. Because I don't need him to come and say that anymore. I would just look at that like, that's fine, but I, I'm still fine without you. You know, I still don't trust it. I would feel like that. It would be that way, and then it just go back. I'm fine without him in my life. And I think, and I think that scares some people that are trying to work with forgiving. And I think that scares them, especially if it's a family member. They're like, but this family, and I got it. No, you don't have to. You don't have to. Like I'm saying, this podcast is just for those that were struggling with forgiveness. That's struggling with getting over something. This is just a new way of looking at it because I promise you, I promise you, you can make peace with it. You can forgive. You cannot forgive. I mean, you cannot forgive and still heal. Yes, you can. Believe that. I am living proof of that. And like I said, the therapist said it. Dr. Nidra Tawab said it. She said it. And I'm like, that right there is my validation. I'm going to bring up all these old posts and everything now and share it without caring about who going to have something to say about it. Because I'm like, I felt strongly about it then. But now it's just like that extra level of confirmation. Like, I didn't need the confirmation and the validation. I just know I like peace on my page. And that's why I'm... Not careful with what I share because I want to share things that's going to help you all. But I'm not going to do it if it's too much backlash. And I don't cut off comments because I get a lot of good comments. A lot of people actually said it helped them. So I'm going to start back sharing it again. And this time, I've since I've made peace with it, I, f I think I feel more comfortable sharing it and just deleting the comments or not reading it or being like, whatever. I'm not going to go back and forth with anyone. I look back on my old posts that I um, went and found about um, hating your abuser. And I've seen a few comments that I was just like, whatever. And I didn't even respond. And I said, okay, I can do this. I'm going to reshare it because I'm looking at the comments and it helps so many people. So if you're not following me on my Instagram, it's I've been that girl too. You can always go to the link in the description. I've been that girl.net. Everything is there. I have my Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. My Patreon, where I do my one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I do my um, bonus podcast. I have hundreds of podcast episodes on there, so everything's in that link. But yeah, I would say check me out on Instagram, too, to read some of the posts and the comments, the community on there. I so wish that the podcast um, platforms had to where people can comment on each podcast and not just like write a review. But if you want to feel more so in a community and have people that you relate to... 
definitely Instagram because I love the comments. I'm not even just trying to brag on my page. Um, but I just really love reading the comments. Like, y'all be like, you helped me so much. Y'all help me. Like, a lot of this I felt kind of alone in, but I feel like it's been my duty and it's on my life to still share my truth, whether I found anyone that agrees with it or not. It's for me to share my truth. That's my that's my journey, and I know that's what I'm here for. That's That's my life calling. And so I do that. And then just to see y'all come in and just give like a little extra confirmation and say that you felt that way too. That's was you too. I'm like, y'all helping me too. Like, I love my community on there. So I'm going to be posting, um, reposting the post that um, was controversial about me saying forgiveness. I already posted a reel saying um Instead of trying to forgive your toxic exes, possibly work on uh, making peace with it. And I even put in the comments how making peace can inc include you just accepting that for accepting that that's who they was and it had nothing to do with you and accepting that you just don't like them. You don't have a liking for them and that's okay. You're you're upset over that still. And don't let the upset consume you, but usually just making peace with it. It's how you get to the healing part. And if if in the end of all of that, of making peace with things, you feel like you can forgive, then do so. But I almost feel like what it really should be is that you make peace with it. You don't even have to really forgive. I don't. I almost say it's better to just say make peace with it because that can be any way that you want. That can be rather forgiving. That can be just accepting. That can be in a, a different ways. So just realize that once you get to the end of making peace, that forgiveness is a choice that you can either decide to forgive them or you can decide to not and just move on with your life peacefully. Move on. And that's all. Because... One more thing I want to say is that I almost feel like people don't deserve your forgiveness. And how they say that forgiveness is for you, I don't even feel like that makes really any much any sense, really. I don't feel like that makes that much sense. Because when you think about it, if someone knows, if someone did some real low down shit to you, hurt you, abused you, any any kind of way, and they know that you forgiven them or they come back and they're like, you know, please forgive me. And you say, I forgive you and you forgive them. That's resting their conscience. That's making them feel good because, oh, I have their forgiveness for hurting them. What kind of sense does that make? Like, that's, that forgiveness is not for you. People say that making peace with it, I think, is for you. Forgiving yourself is for you. But forgiving them is for them, no matter how way you, no matter how which way you try to twist it around, no how, no matter how much you try to put like a little pretty bow on it, no matter how you try to twist the words around, forgiveness is for them. Like if you're forgiving them, it's for them. You can make it for you by saying, you know, so I won't be angry. But making peace can also get you to the point of not feeling anger or not feeling resentment of not feeling bitterness making peace with the situation in itself making peace with the fact that you don't want to forgive them making peace with the fact that they are who they are making peace with the fact that you were really feeling this hatred towards them because you were mad at yourself for still feeling this way because you feel like you couldn't forgive them it's nothing wrong if you can't forgive them so make peace with it that's why i feel like making peace is for you forgiving yourself is for you but some people, I feel like, don't deserve to feel the grace of your forgiveness. They do not. They do not. They can deal with that shit on their own. Like, you had to go away and heal yourself and put your pieces back together. Why would I help them put their pieces back together by, for, by letting them forgive them or by, you know, extending grace to them? No, fuck that. No, some people deserve to feel that guilt to feel that pain of what they did because that's how they change they change from them feeling their own shit feeling bad about the own shit that they did and then healing it, them healing it themselves instead of running to you if you forgive me then i'll get over it no you work on that like i had to work on me that's how i feel that is and y'all can say oh that sounds like bitterness and anger all you want but it's just the truth when i think about it. the truth for me and the truth for the situation from looking at it in different eyes, I'm like, yeah. They, you know, forgiving them is for them. 
<laughs> it's, it just flat out is. I don't see any other way that you can look at that. Because it's helping them to deal with it and get over it. But no, they sh- no. Sometimes feeling those feelings is what we need, is necessary. Even us feeling the anger, because um, I'm sure you've seen this floating around. I think um, someone said their therapist told them that the anger is actually a part that loves them. And that's what helps you, catapults you into change and healing yourself so you can feel something differently. So let them, whoever hurt you, abused you, was toxic to you, whoever did anything to you like that, let them feel the karma. Let them feel that pain. Let them get in there and feel it. They may or may not ever feel that way. I'm not saying that they will. But if they but let them deal with that. Let them do that. Because if they don't, if they just keep on thinking they can do what they want and somebody's gonna forgive them, they're never gonna be able to hold themselves accountable. And so that's why I had to take myself out of my dad's life. Like you don't deserve me. If you can't hold yourself accountable for the hurt that you caused me all these years, you don't deserve me. And that ain't bitterness, baby. That's self-love and self-care. So, yeah, I had to remove myself because I care about myself and I love myself. And I'm not going to keep exposing myself to someone that's just going to keep hurting me. I'm not going to expose myself to someone that I cannot trust. I'm not going to expose myself to someone that can't hold themselves accountable for what they've done to me what sense does that make so no they don't deserve my forgiveness and they don't deserve me to be reconnected with them no you don't deserve me and it feels good to say that I want you to say that like to people that you have to cut off for people that you feel like that you've now decided maybe by the end of this podcast that I don't forgive them yeah fuck them she's right if you're feeling like that right now I want you to say to yourself, they don't deserve me. And they don't deserve my grace. They don't. They deserve to feel that shit like you had to feel it. And you had to heal it. They deserve to feel their feelings and heal through their shit on their own. Don't mess with their karma. You know, don't mess with what the universe and God is trying to do to them. Don't mess with that. If they're not, if they're not meeting you halfway on the bridge, don't mess with it. Nope. You're not, no, you're done trying to mend relationships where you didn't do anything wrong. So you have every right to move on, girlfriends. You have every right to decide that you don't want to forgive them and that you instead just want to make peace and that you instead just want to move on and you instead just want to forget about them, you know? So that's my story and I'm sticking to it because, yeah. <laughs> And I didn't shed one tear through this. I'm proud of me. Like, the stuff that kind of still hurts is the inner one, the child stuff that I be talking about. But I didn't cry one tear. I was passionate about it because I really feel this. And I just thank, I just thank Dr. Um, Nidra to, to for, for for that video. I didn't even watch the whole thing. I need to go back and watch it. But seeing her say that, that just like, the extra, like the little cherry on top that I needed I, like I said, I I was conf- I validated myself all along, but that right there, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start back talking about this again, and I did in this podcast, and look out for my post on my Instagram. But y'all, I think that's all I got to say. Yeah, this is like a little bonus bonus. I usually put my bonus on my Patreon, but this one was just too big for me not to share with every single body. That listens to me. I want everybody to be able to access this information in particular. Now, there will be some extra things on my Patreon about detached dating. That was my last podcast episode. It will be some things about detached dating. And also, oh yeah, before I go, check out my YouTube channel. I'm going to now start posting affirmations, guided affirmations. Meaning where I just, it's going to be a certain different topics. I have like a list of topics already and a list of affirmations. The first one is going to be self-love affirmations. It's going to be like over some soothing type music. I'm going to have my voice all soothing like. And it's going to help you to relax and to say these things to yourself. I'm so excited. And these are going to be natural typical affirmations. It'll, It'll have a few typical ones in there to help you. But I thought of all these on my own. And these are the affirmations that I actually say to myself. So I'm excited to share them with you all. I'm so excited about this. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube, I would suggest you do that. Because I'm not going to put the guided affirmations 
on my podcast because it's not a podcast. The gathered affirmations will only be available on my YouTube channel, which is the link in my bio. And they'll be, be on the lookout for that in the next week or two. And also you can go and check out some other videos I got that's not on my podcast. But that's really all I got this time, y'all. Until the next podcast episode, peace out.